This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a sci-fi action film called Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. William Adama writes to his father about his responsibility in the war against the Cylon. He answers that it's everyone's responsibility when humans created the robots. Nobody knows why the Cylons hate humans, but it's a kill or be killed world. It's up to everyone to make a difference. And for him, it's being a pilot. During a battle in space, Adama pilots his ship with skill and shoots down an enemy. His canopy cracks from colliding into a destroyed ship, limiting his vision of the field. So his commanding officer tells him to retreat. Adama removes the canopy and ignores the order. He's warned against radiation poisoning, but Adama only cares about not being able to use his jammed guns. Against better judgment, he flies his ship over the enemy and fires his gun, destroying them. Adama cheers as he completes a simulation. On board a ship, he brags to JC McGavin, sitting next to him. McGavin profiles him as someone who is top of his class and only worries about not making it to war before it's over. Adama says she's right, except that he doesn't worry. Adama flirts with her, so she distracts him by pointing out the Battlestar Galactica through the window. Adama is awed as they pass it. Adama gets inside the battleship so awestruck that he blocks the way for passengers. There, he recognizes his hero, Captain Deke Tornvald. Captain Diaz greets McGavin with familiarity, then looks to Adama, who eagerly introduces himself as an ensign. Diaz checks his papers and asks if he'd rather rest before getting an assignment. Adama refuses, saying he signed up for killing toasters, not taking naps. Diaz immediately assigns him to the Wild Weasel. Adama turns, thinking it's the Viper fighter passing by, but Diaz points to an old Raptor spacecraft instead. Adama argues that he didn't become top of his class just to drive a bus, but Diaz stresses that they're losing the war, so they need more Raptor pilots than Viper jocks. Adama goes to the Raptor and meets his co-pilot, who's annoyed that he gets sent a Greenhorn. Adama makes himself useful by helping fix the Raptor. Adama sees a toolbox with the co-pilot's name, Fas Jovic, but he tells him to call him Coker instead. An announcement calls him for a briefing. Coker advises Adama to listen closely and calls him Husker, an insult describing him as a country bumpkin. Adama explains that he's from Caprica City, but Coker doesn't care. While waiting to be admitted, Adama saves Coker from embarrassment by warning him about the obvious flask in his pocket. They go inside and salute Commander Silas Nash. Nash comments on Coker's last days in his mandatory tour and inquires if he'd stay longer, but Coker refuses. Nash turns his attention to Adama, pointing out his family connections and his trainer's evaluation of him as a natural pilot. Nash deduces him as a cocky pilot and assigns him a mission that he describes as a milk run. In the locker rooms, Adama complains to Coker about being sent on delivery runs. Coker isn't sympathetic to his complaints, as he'd rather have laid-back missions until his tour ends. Coker leaves to shower, when Adama notices a scarred back of Tornvald. Adama approaches him and tells Tornvald about how he's an inspiration to him as a pilot. Adama is disappointed when his hero tells him that everything they're doing is nonsense. In the showers, Coker gossips with the crew about his assignment being basically a vacation. When Adama shows up, he admonishes them pointing out that they're supposed to be there to kill the machines. Coker leaves with a sarcastic hurrah, and McGavin tells him to stop being in a rush. Adama reaches for a towel, only for a woman to take it. They look into each other's eyes before she leaves with a smile. In the hangar, Adama speaks about his family to Coker. Coker tells him that, with lawyers for parents, he could have easily avoided the war. Adama asks him if that's what he would have done, but Coker defends that nobody gave him a choice. Their artillery arrives, and Coker complains that it's not enough. Adama is more interested in their cargo, so the crewman points toward the woman Adama met in the showers. Dr. Becca Kelly introduces herself as a civilian software engineer. Adama fumbles to introduce himself properly as her pilot and stretches his hand to shake, only for Kelly to place her bag on it. Adama continues to fumble, but Kelly moves inside their ship, insulting it along the way. Adama is left staring, love-struck. Coker stares at him funny until he leaves. The raptor flies off with Adama commentating like an airplane pilot. Coker knows that he's trying to charm Kelly, so he tells him he's wasting his time. Kelly interrupts and inquires if they're out of any communication range. They confirm, and she hands them a letter. Coker takes it and finds that it's additional orders from Admiralty. Kelly points out the new coordinates to rendezvous with the heavy cruiser Archeron. It's on the edge of Cylon-controlled space, which is dangerous, so Coker tries to call in for confirmation. Kelly stops him, stating that this mission requires no communication. She says that they are to follow her orders and tells them to move. Adama jokes about their supposed milk run, and Coker groans. Along the way, Adama's simulation goggles break, so Kelly offers to fix them. Adama discovers that she worked for Greystone Industries, specifically for Cylon's brain function. 
This makes her one of those responsible for why Cylons became what they are now. Coker calls him back to man the ship as they approach their coordinates. However, they receive no feedback from Archeron, so Kelly tells him to break radio silence and contact them directly. After a couple of calls with no response, a dead body slams into their ship. They fly closer and see the Archeron is destroyed. Adama figures that they might have been ambushed. Suddenly, an alert warns them of three enemies. After barely dodging an attack, they engage the enemies despite Kelly warning them not to. Adama and Coker fly through Archeron's remains and dodge another shot. A raider blocks them, but they shoot it down easily. However, with limited artillery, they run out of missiles. Adama takes them into a tunnel with raiders following behind. Coker uses their turrets to shoot one down, but one raider remains. The turrets take damage from collision, so Adama thinks of a plan B. He directs the ship to a still active jump drive. Coker yells at Adama, thinking that they'll get crushed by the engine shooting pistons. But Adama figures out their pattern and gets them out safely. The raider gets crushed when it follows. Coker is happy to finally head home, and Adama agrees with him. However, Kelly stresses that the mission isn't over. She orders him to message a specific frequency, and they receive coordinates in Cylon space. Coker refuses to fly there, but Adama pulls up his position as the pilot, so he's forced to agree. Getting closer to their destination, Adama wakes a sleeping Kelly and finds her talking in her sleep. When he reaches to touch her, Kelly rubs his arm and calls him Ezra. Kelly wakes up and explains that Ezra Barzell, a marine who took out a Cylon platoon, was her husband. As they arrive, Viper circle the raptor, demanding a password. None of them knows the password, so Adama and Coker panic when the fighters start a countdown for an attack. Kelly saves them when she finds the password on the Admiralty's letter. They pass through and see a fleet of presumably lost or destroyed ships hiding in Cylon space. The raptor lands inside the Battlestar Osiris, and when when they get out, they're immediately greeted by soldiers. Kelly lets them scan her necklace to confirm her identity. Then, they're taken to Commander Ozar. Ozar provides Kelly with a raptor to continue her mission. When Adama volunteers their raptor, they're denied. Kelly vouches for them, recounting their battle with the raiders, so Ozar agrees. Coker hears Ozar mention getting volunteers, leading him to believe that they got themselves into a one-way trip to die. Ozar briefs them of the mission to deliver Dr. Kelly to Jerba. The location is mostly unguarded, and a marine recon team was already sent there. Coker finds his old friend Jim Kirby, who presumably died along with the ship Valkyrie. Jim explains how Command saw an opportunity to salvage dead ships and gather them there so they could strike when the enemy least expected it. Coker mentions Jim's wife having his child, and Jim is overjoyed to learn that he has a son. They hug it out before a call for combat is announced. The Osiris jumps to Jerba space and detects an enemy base star nearby. Ozar decides to engage the base star using their Viper fleet, distracting it from the planet while a couple of Vipers protect Kelly's Raptor. She stresses to her soldiers that the fate of the war hinges on their mission. The base star launches raiders, and the Osiris counters with Vipers. Both start to open fire and take damage. Ozar gives an order to release nukes, but they are jammed in their ship. Adama flies a raptor into Jerba space, but raiders give chase. The base star gains ground on Osiris, so Ozar orders their ship to get close, planning to activate the nukes manually. Ozar places a hand on her captain's shoulder, who looks at her, knowing what'll happen next. The Osiris crashes into the base star, and Ozar activates the nukes, taking them both out. Adama dodges raiders while vipers try to take them out. They shoot a raider down, but also lose a viper. Kirby, who is the last Viper pilot with them, apologizes before abandoning them to have a chance with his family. Coker runs out of turret ammo, so Adama thinks of a plan. When the raider is close enough, he releases fuel and blasts the raptor's combustion. The raider burns and crashes to the ground. Adama lands them safely despite the raptor gaining too much damage. After all the deaths, Coker wants to repair the raptor and escape, but Adama only thinks of the mission. They argue until Kelly fires a warning shot, and tells Coker that the fastest way to go home is to meet the Marines and get a transponder. Coker is reluctant to leave the Raptor that kept him safe for years, but he relents. They follow the transponder signal into a cave of dead bodies, discovering the transponder in one of them. Adama continues to look around when Coker and Kelly fall into a hole. Adama uses a rope to drop down, but they hear noises around when he arrives. Suddenly, Coker gets bitten. He goes down, and a snake-like creature continues to attack. Adama tries to shoot it, but struggles to get a clear shot. Finally, another man drops in and shoots the creature dead. They go back up, and the man introduces himself as Toth, a demolition man. His unit was attacked by the same creatures, leaving Toth as the last marine. He survived by learning how to kill the Cylon's half-machine, half-organic experiments, and eating them. Kelly asks Toth about the mission, but he advises them against going to her objective, as there will be a Cylon patrol in a storm. 
Instead, he suggests going to a secure location to wait out the storm, but Koku refuses, so Toth suddenly chokes him. Adama aims a gun at Toth, but he threatens to kill Koker, so he yields. To spend the night, Toth leads him to an abandoned Cylon storage facility, where he has planted tripwires and mines all around. Inside the facility, Toth takes the first watch and leaves them be. Later, Kelly finds an empty crib with a doll inside and tears up. Adama finds her and asks about Ezra. She tells him about how the war forced Ezra to be a hero when he didn't want to. A reporter found out that Ezra didn't die while fighting a Cylon platoon, but was shot by his own men. Adama gets close to her and says he understands, but Kelly tells him he'll regret this, even as she lets him brush his hand on her shoulder. Toth and Coker eat, while Adama and Kelly sleep together. Coker tries to find out more about Toth, but he brushes him off. After losing so many, Toth is tired of people and asks Coker to leave him alone. Adama wakes up beside Kelly and hears music. He follows it and finds Coker playing the piano. While they drink, Coker berates him for sleeping with Kelly when he doesn't even know her motivations. Adama says she revealed something about her husband, but Coker laughs. An explosion interrupts them, and they go look for Kelly. Toth fights off a Cylon, but isn't able to shoot it down. While Kelly searches for the others, she finds herself in a freezer full of dead bodies. Adama continues to search for Kelly but finds a Cylon instead. He shoots it on the head, but it barely scratches it. He gets knocked down and finds a piece of metal on the floor. Adama bashes the Cylon until it dies. Kelly hides inside the freezer as a Cylon approaches. She gets caught, but the Cylon only scans her necklace. Coker finds Kelly and shoots the Cylon down. Adama arrives, and they all look at the fallen Cylon that's releasing strange noises. Kelly says that it's screaming in pain, so Coker puts it out of his misery. They gather around, and Adama asks about Toth. Coker says that Toth took out two Cylons, but he won't make it. Coker took Toth's transponder, and he intends to use it to evacuate. Adama takes it, but Coker aims a gun at him, unwilling to die for the mission. He then aims the gun at Kelly instead and questions her about the mission. Kelly reveals the plan to end the war using a virus on her necklace that'll be transmitted using an automated array. Adama is hurt that she didn't trust him with this, but Kelly says that she trusts him now. Glad that Kelly is communicating with them, Coker lowers his gun, and they make their way to the array. Kelly leads them to the facility, and they get inside without trouble. Kelly begins uploading the virus with Coker beside her. Adama asks him to hurry up, but Coker suddenly shoots Kelly. Coker tells him Kelly is a Cylon spy. Coker recounts seeing the Cylon cornering Kelly, and it didn't kill her. Instead, it only scanned the necklace. Coker realizes that the necklace isn't a virus, but a recording device that'll give the Cylons information about the ghost fleet. Before he can say more, Kelly shoots him. Adama tries to talk her out of this, but Kelly believes that the Cylons are only defending themselves, and they value life more than humans do. When he's unconvinced, she shoots Adama on the shoulder. She goes in for the kill but runs out of ammo. Adama takes her gun, but struggles to stop the upload. The wounded Coker tells him about Plan B, so Adama uses a gun to destroy the system. Adama helps Coker up, and they make their way out. He gives Kelly one final glance, then leaves. Blood drips on the snow as they walk outside. They sit down to rest, and Adama activates a transponder for evac. Coker pulls out a picture and hands it to Adama, telling him it's his wife. Adama asks why he never told him, so Coker replies that there are things one misses too much and he wouldn't be able to understand. Coker closes his eyes, and Adama reaches over to check his pulse, but says nothing. Soon, the rescue arrives. Back at the array, a Cylon finds Kelly and recognizes that she sympathizes with him. However, that doesn't stop its hatred for humans, so the Cylon breaks Kelly's neck. Adama returns to Galactica, and Nash commends him as a hero, giving him a report to sign off. Adama reads it but gets confused that it reports the mission as a success. Despite Kelly uploading the fleet's data, Adama realizes that Nash knew about Kelly's betrayal. The ghost fleet was already gone by the time its location was discovered, but they managed to hit several Cylon bases while they were busy attacking the fleet. Adama mentions deaths from the Osiris, but Nash excuses that they died for the cause. Adama feels used, but Nash tells him that there are things more important than his integrity. Nash explains that the world needs hope, and it's only supplied by heroes like them. Despite being disappointed, Adama signs the report. Nash mentions assembling the best men out there, and if Adama volunteers, there will be a nice viper waiting for him. Nash leaves, and Adama is surprised to find Coker still alive. Adama asks if Coker is going home, but he says that he'll stick around while he's still on tour. 
While writing to his father again, Adama reflects on what he thought of War before. He realizes his mistake about expecting different things, and that he needed to live it before really understanding. Still, this is the life he's chosen. The crew is his family, and he'll remember them the most when this war is over. Adama goes to his Viper jet and sees his call name, Husker, on it. Along with a fleet of Vipers, Adama rides off into space with a smile. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.